This review for Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will exclusively cover the campaign mode. I will be doing a raw review for the multiplayer and zombies, which after playing for a bit, I feel is worth discussing to some extent. If you followed this channel over the course of 2024, you'll probably know that I'm not a big fan of AAA games. While there are obviously some mainstream releases I dig, and I don't have some artistic objection to games getting bigger budgets, I've mostly grown tired of the same cheap thrills that AAA games provide. I'm also a huge proponent of worker rights, and having reported on many of the horror stories that have come out from employees at big publishers, I tend to shy away from blockbuster gaming simply because I don't want to continue the current cycle of misery that is happening within the industry. So why am I talking about Call of Duty Black Ops 6 then? This one is actually pretty simple. Most of the reception I saw across social media and from within games media is that Black Ops 6 was the best Call of Duty campaign in over a decade. People had proclaimed that all of the sins of the past were forgiven and that even lapsed fans would find something to enjoy here. I used to really dig Call of Duty until the original Modern Warfare 2, so I figured I should give this a shot to see if the hype was justified. As you've likely deducted from the title of this video, I didn't leave the campaign impressed. Black Ops 6 isn't a disaster or anything, but this campaign is pretty much the same thing Call of Duty has been doing for the last 15 years. You get occasional flashes of inspiration mixed in with generic military shooter design that is married to a plot which somehow manages to be really straightforward and super convoluted at the same time. I guess that's what I get for believing in the hype. I don't know that I can adequately summarize the plot of Black Ops 6, as it requires a ton of knowledge from past Call of Duty campaigns. As the 6 would signify, this is a direct follow-up to the previous Black Ops title, Cold War, and takes place in the early 90s. Players assume the role of CIA operative William Case Calderon, and the plot begins smack in the middle of Operation Desert Storm. Partnered with operatives Troy Marshall and Jane Haro, your first task is to extract the Iraqi Minister of Defense, Saeed Alawi, and once you locate him, he reveals that he's being targeted by a rogue paramilitary group called Pantheon. When Pantheon forces attack, the team narrowly escapes before being greeted by Russell Adler, a CIA agent who went rogue during the events of Cold War. Adler kills Alawi and gives a message to Marshall, which kicks off a campaign that investigates how deep Pantheon's infiltration of the CIA goes. As far as a setup goes, what Black Ops 6 offers is perfectly serviceable. This is not unlike some of the plot lines that were featured in Fox's 24 all those years ago, and it falls in line with shows such as NCIS and the like. I do think it's fairly interesting that Treyarch was able to make two Call of Duty games where America is compromised, but it's really only surface level stuff. Despite finally having named characters with actual backstories, something the series has been dabbling in since 2014's Advanced Warfare, everyone is one-dimensional, and the revelations that are eventually uncovered in the story don't amount to anything. The series began in the Spielbergian tradition of honoring the troops through thinly-veiled patriotism, and eventually progressed into a bizarre sense of jingoism, and that is very much still the order of the day here. None of that ultimately matters for Call of Duty, however. These games have always been about putting players into the thick of combat and having them all at the sheer spectacle of it all. Black Ops 6 follows that pattern, but ultimately doesn't have much in the way of what you'd call set pieces. Thinking back on specific levels is kind of tough, as everything blurs together, but the elements that work here are when levels give the player more freedom in how they approach objectives. The Call of Duty series and the avalanche of military shooters that followed in its popularity have been rightfully criticized over the years for having ultra-linear level design, and that still applies to some degree here. Black Ops 6 will often start scenarios where the player pretty much walks down a hallway and shoots at targets before moving up and repeating that. It's the gaming equivalent of junk food, offering just enough interaction to feel fun, but never lingering much longer than the moment. At certain points, however, the maps will open up and players will be given a choice of where they go first. The best example of this is an early level at a political rally. While I don't much care for the digital recreation of former President Bill Clinton, the idea here is that you're deep undercover and need to remain mostly hidden while sussing out a target. To do so, you can hit up various points around the rally to gather intel that will help you spot your man. One has you stealthing behind the coat check to rummage through the target's pockets, and another has you attending an auction to get closer and capture a retinal scan from him up close. All the choices obviously converge into the same finale, but being able to play your own way is excellent. It also means replays of the level can offer variation, something that Call of Duty sorely lacks. 
This even follows into the next mission, which has you driving around Kuwait to disable Scud missiles. You can tell this concept is borrowed from Sony's God of War, which featured sandbox-styled maps players could explore at their leisure, but were still confined to smaller locales. This is hardly open world, and while I still don't care for driving around the desert doing nothing at points, at least you could pick a direction and finish objectives in whichever order you like. All of this is fine and dandy, but the problem is that nothing here is memorable otherwise. I will never knock choices in a game, but after you've made the choice and followed the different route, the level design then shifts into the same old thing Call of Duty has always followed. At one point in the third mission, you exit from a van and are told to infiltrate a restaurant where the target is. There are a ton of open streets that circle around the building, and I figured I would avoid everyone by going down an empty alleyway. I was promptly met with a return to the mission area warning. Bummer. Later missions also feel like repeats and mashups of the levels from the original Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2. It's certainly something to drive a tank over an airport tarmac, but when you're gunning enemies down in a terminal and then fighting through the airplane itself, it's hard to muster up much enthusiasm. This just feels like the same stuff I played when I was in my early 20s. Coupled that with entire missions going by where nothing of interest really happens, and I'm a little baffled at the general reception to this campaign. The only other notable moment comes roughly in the middle of the game. Case and Marshall enter a CIA black site where some kind of gas is leaked into the facility. You fall down a shaft and your mask is then broken, leading to you inhaling some of the gas. You start to hallucinate zombies and even bigger monsters as you explore the halls of the facility. There's even a grappling hook you get at one point, which makes traversal pretty fun. It does feel out of place, but it's a solid change of pace and shows how developer Raven Software likely wants to break free from the confines of generic military slop. I do wish the campaign had more of this. Even still, everything handles fine and the player movement is very solid. I will touch on this in my eventual multiplayer review, but there's something called Omni Movement here that lets you sprint in any direction and pull off ridiculous dive move maneuvers. It never factors into anything the campaign has going on, but it's still fun to perform a slide and kill someone, or dive over a railing to then spin around in midair and shoot someone. Any of the good qualities in Black Ops 6 are really just things the Call of Duty series has always excelled at. It has a great frame rate, the visuals are nice, the guns offer extreme customization, there's robust controller and keyboard mouse binding options, and there's even a great quick menu for options you frequently use. The sound design is exceptional, and the campaign really doesn't waste your time with too much frivolous nonsense. I haven't even explained the interludes in The Rook, the mansion where your team hides out, but I don't feel they add anything really. I guess it's cool to have a base of operations, and there are some of the trademark Treyarch secrets hidden about. But the planning you do for missions is so limited and the characters so one note that I often just went straight to the upgrade table, then started the next map. There's not anything else you can do here. When the credits rolled and I was finished with the campaign, I didn't feel as if I had experienced some reinvention of the Call of Duty brand or even the next evolution of what was possible with the series. This was just business as usual. Maybe if most of these ideas hadn't been done by other games over the course of the last 20 years, I'd have been more receptive to what Black Ops 6 is providing. You don't even need to look that far back into Call of Duty's past to find similar things. Obviously, my opinion on the campaign isn't meant to be a general audience thing. As I stated up above, I only played this because the reception was so overwhelmingly positive that I became interested in seeing if things could live up to the hype. Again, Black Ops 6 is not a bad game, but if you're a lapsed fan or someone that generally doesn't dig military shooters, nothing here will change your mind. There's a reason the Call of Duty machine continues to grind away and it's because it is a dependable, if unexciting, bit of gameplay each year. Black Ops 6 has at least made me content with Call of Duty's existence. While I would love for the series to return to its former glory, and for AAA games to take more risks, at least we have indie games filling in the gaps now. Black Ops 6 gets a pass when Killing Time Resurrected can be a thing.